Let's begin on to start recording. Kai, I'm speaking to you from the land known as Bulekebek or Brunswick, where the Murnong yam daisies grow on the banks of the Merry Creek. This place is part of Nam Melbourne, whose traditional owners are the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respect to their elders, past and present, and to the ancestors of the lands where you come from. And today, now with your permission, we will share our learnings over the course of the next hour. But is, is, as is our tradition, uh, let's begin with a salutation by the person who gave the previous talk last month, uh, Linda McIntosh, who gave us a wonderful talk about Laotian craft. Uh, Linda, uh, over to you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> สีคองที่เห็ดโดยมือซามาเป็นศักดิ์สิทธิ์แต่เป็นสิ่งของที่ภายในชีวิตประจำมือในสามคงตั้งต่างและในทั่วโลกคงที่เห็ดเครื่อง
Okay, can you, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so I, I would like to start my presentation. So the topic is One Village, One Product, a global platform for local craft. Uh, before delving into the subject, I just would like to briefly explain how did I know about this concept. From 2011 to 2014, I worked as a local consultant for a JICA project. JICA is the Japan International Cooperation Agency. The project name was One Village, One Product, Un Village, Un Produit. It was implemented in my country. So during the project <coughs> implementation, I was in direct contact with the beneficiaries, with the local communities. So I had the opportunity to discover the local communities, their product, and most impressive to me, I think, was the potential of local treasures that I saw do not exist in my own country. So I was very fascinated by this concept. And right after the project termination, I applied for a Japanese scholarship. And then I went to Japan to study, to further my knowledge about this concept. So over there, I met the researcher, the, the, especially the academics, the researchers who publish a lot of papers about the OVOP. And then as a result of this, I completed a master's thesis uh, titled Beyond the OVOP through Design Thinking Approach. So I worked, uh, I had a good collaboration with my supervisor Sensei Suzuki Kanichiro. He is an expert of the design thinking. And me, I had some knowledge experience about the OVOP. So we combined it to make a good cooking. <laughs> and after the thesis, we continue, we pursue our collaboration and we published two papers. So the first one uh, was the OVOP as a tool to develop small and medium sized enterprises inside from uh, OVOP entrepreneurial experience in Senegal. And the second paper, beyond the one village, one product concept through design thinking approach. So both papers uh, have been published in the International Journal of Education of and Research. All these, all, these, uh, all these three researches are available on uh, a free, free download on Google. And then this is uh, the presentation outline. So first, I would like to discuss what, it, what is the OVOP, its origin, the objectives of this movement, the achievements, and also the overseas, the worldwide OVOP. And second, background of OVOP in Senegal. Here, I would like to share with you the main faces, the main stakeholders of this of these OVOP program in Senegal. Three, findings of, of, of Senegal OVOP, where I will share my humble, my modest learnings about this, uh, this program. Four, way forward global OVOP community. So what is, what is about, what's about the concept now? Like where is the concept now? So I would like to discuss with it and answer on five takeaways, because I think in the poster, in the materials, the poster, like uh, Kevin raised some issues related to localism, to the supply chain, and to Gandhi's uh, Swadeshi, I think. So I would like through the takeaways to, to talk about this is, these issues Kevin raised. So what is the OVOP? The, the One Village, One Product, so is a Japanese rural-oriented model. It was proposed to to reduce poverty and also to stop the depopulation, especially in rural areas. It was initiated by uh, Dr. Mori Matsu in 1979, when he was first elected as governor of Aita Prefecture, Japan. So the main objectives of this movement was both to achieve GNP and GNS society. GNP is Gross National Product Oriented Society, a society realized by focusing on economic development or raising citizens' incomes. This is uh, 
and also GNS, Oriented Society, a society realized by focusing on citizen spiritual contentment rather than material satisfaction. So to summarize, I think the objective of this movement was both to achieve the harmony between material and spiritual, material and spiritual harmony in the rural areas of Oita Prefecture. So this movement called Ison EP, the Ison EP in Japanese, it was a campaign which uh, uh, Dr. Hiramatsu introduced. Uh, he sought to encourage and empower local citizens to unearth opportunities for economic growth and develop local industries with a global outlook. This movement so relied on three basic uh, principles. So the first one is uh, local yet global. So the main objective, the main objective of this principle is to is to produce globally accepted products that reflect of the local flavor and culture. This is mainly the marketing concept. And second self-reliance self and creativity. So realization of one village, one product service through self-initiative actions, utilizing potential resources of the region. This is the mindset, the mind innovation. And third, UHR, human resource development to foster, to foster, foster of proactive people with a challenging and creative spirit. This is the entrepreneurship how to nurture the spirit of entrepreneurship, how to model the future, the local leaders. So these are the three basic principles of the OVOP. So it was, uh, reproduced, it was reproduced in various countries around the world, but the difference that is uh, between the original OVOP and the, OV and the other OVOP is mainly the implementation. So I think after we're gonna, we can further talk about the different approach between the OVOP in Japan and OVOP overseas. So what about the achievements? So Sensei Hiramatsu, I think he, he tried to develop both the, what we called, I think in economics, a uh, balance, balance dynamic economics, something like that, like to invite the industries in, uh, in Oita and at the same time also to develop the local communities. So to do that, he invited so big, big manufacturers like Canon, Nippon Steel, Toshiba to settle, so to establish their own factories. So in the Oita, in Oita's postal industrial, and also here, there is one factor that all these big uh, manufacturers, because of the pollution, they were located so near the sea. This is just to reduce like the env uh, environmental uh, impacts. So the second is uh, another achievement is the prefectural income per head in Oita prefecture to exceed that of Fukuoka. And we know like Fukuoka is the herd of the Kyushu area. Mm -hmm. And also sales revenue generated through, through the OVOP movement, OVOP movement, excluding local events and activities. So we can compare from uh, 1980 to 1999. We can see that in 90, 1980, it was 143 products. And the total sales amount was 36 Japanese, uh, billion Japanese yen. And in 1999, 2000, it was three 320 products and 137 billion. So we can see like the big achievements of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, movement. What, so the most popular products of the OVOP and now we shall like they have the international brand. We have the shiitake mushrooms, bongo beef, uh, mikan, mandari orange, bamboo works, Bamboo works are number one. The Oita bamboo works are number one in, in Japan. And also in the Oita area, in Kyushu area, Sensei Iramatsu through the OVOP, so they developed some worldwide famous resort area, namely like the, namely the Yufrin, Yufrin, which is very famous all over the world. Yufrin, 
un temps elle so be pouspa. So if we look closely at the map, we can see that the OVOP did not only focus on products, on food products or on craft. It also includes the culture. We can see like here wrestling and also some festival, some festival events. So it's not differently, for example, to Senegal, where we just focus on food products and craft. In Japan, it's like, it's more diverse. It's, it's the food products, craft products, uh, wrestling, the, the tourism resort areas and so on. So the keys to the success. So according to Hiramatsu, in one of his paper that he published, the, the One Village, One Product Movement, spreading throughout the world. So he, he shared like three key success of the OVOP. So the first one is local residents' awareness of their own potential and their region's resources. The second one, recognition of the treasures in the area. The third, continuity is power. Because like if I did some research about the OVOP in Japan, it was not only always successful. It was not always successful. And also it took like 30 years to develop, to develop this OVOP. So continuity, the failure tolerant, continuity is power. High value added products. This is mainly related to the first uh, principles of the OVOP, how to develop local products with a global outlook. Mm -hmm. The secured a sales route related to the supply chain and also human resources development. We know like over OVOP movement in Japan in Oita, they also focus a lot on the human resources, human resources development through the establishment of training centers and so on. So what about overseas? OITA was uh, OITA like China, outside, uh, outside Japan, China was the first, Ch China was the first country to adopt, uh, to adopt this movement. And then it spread through far Asia and also Africa and other country. And for example, in Africa, Malawi was the first, uh, Malawi was the first country in Africa so to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all these countries, because like the OVOP was successful, was successful in Japan, so they try to develop, they try to develop to adopt this movement because of its potential to reverse the local, the local decline. So here we have the, the logos of some countries that embraced so the OVOP. So we can see like the OVOP Japan, one village, one product. We can see Kenya, over Kenya. We can even see like the logo of, uh, of, uh, of Mozambique, like the, this here, the, the movement name is called Kaduk. Mm -hmm. And like for, for, the, for the development of OVOP, OVOP, outside overseas Japan. So it was promoted by the government uh, of Japan through its agencies like JETRO. JETRO is the Japan International Trade Organization or the Japan Bank of International Cooperation and even JICA. So all these Japanese uh, agencies, so they, they, they promote the OVOP to overseas and especially to the developing countries. So some names I, here, like I would like just to share with you some catching names of the of the of this of the OVOP. First, I think one is more catching to me is the Afghanistan. So Afghanistan, their OVOP is called one our village, our pride, our village, our pride. I think by trying to up to appropriate this name, they try to reflect what they really feel about this concept. So Afghanistan, one, our village, our pride, East Java, Indonesia, back to village, Shanghai, China, 
one city, one product, Wuhan in China, one village, one treasure in the USA, one parish, one product, Philippines, one region, one vision, uh, atop, uh, Thailand, atop, one tembo, uh, one product. Tembo is the district. And also in Vietnam, one commune, meaning one commune, uh, one commune, uh, one product. Mm -hmm. So as for as for Africa, the Japanese government launched launched the OVO, OVOP campaign at the TICAD. TICAD is the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. So far, more than 50, more than maybe I think 40 countries adopted this approach. So in these programs, so artisans are encouraged to, in, to identify the local materials or cultural resources and to devise methods to add value to them. But not only the Japanese government try to implement this project, but also, for example, in the Gambia, Gambia is a small country inside Senegal. Here, it's more like the World Food Program who supported them to, to, to implement this program. If we take Egypt, Egypt in the north of Africa, over there, it, it was United Nations women who support them. And also in, Afri in Afghanistan, it was not only, it is UNDP, United Nations Development Program. Mm -hmm. So now we are in, uh, so background of program, of our program in, uh, in Senegal. So this technical assistance uh, project was impl implemented from March 2011 to April 2014 by the Directorate of Craft Industry with the support of the JICA. So the main objective of our program in Senegal was to promote income generation activities of craftsmen through local resources value addition in the target areas. So who are the beneficiaries and what supports were provided to them? So the beneficiaries were ranked into excellent OVOP. Uh, 20 have been selected for two years. The OVOP, 60 producers and also OVOP candidates, uh, 80, producer, uh, 80, 80 producers and 80 groups. So in total, 160 out of 317 applications so were selected as OVOP, as beneficiaries of a program in, in the targeted areas in both the first and the second selection. So the, uh, the support that, that were provided to them was like trainings, trainings meaning business, how to how to, how to prepare a business plan, action plan, and so on. Marketing opportunities. Marketing opportunities are related to, 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 for example, to participation at the international fair, for example, the Dakar International Fair, and also the regional fairs, and also some events, and equipment. Equipment are mainly for the excellent OVAP. The excellent OVAP are the top producers, so there are five, were selected in each region, so 10 in one year. So the equipment here are needed to improve, to improve the, the quantity and the quality and the quality of the production. And also public relations, public relations meaning like the website and also the leaflets where like the, uh, the producers, their products, their stories are advertised. So this is the, the location map of the project target areas. We can see like here, the Senegal is located in the west, in the far west of Africa. So near the Atlantic Ocean. It is comprised of 14 regions. So meaning prefectures, if you are in Japan, like 14 areas. And here, like in red, Fatik and Kaolak were selected as the target areas of this program. So why these areas? Because of their proximity. As they are close, so it's easy to share for knowledge sharing and also for coordination. 
but also I think with time and according to me, it was, it, I think because like in, in both areas, there are similar products. So to me, it was preferable like to select maybe this zone, both regions, and also another area to diverse, to have a diversity of products. Because during the selection process, we, we, we acknowledge that there were similar products because of both regions. But also the both regions like in Senegal, they are called the peanut belt. This is a peanut belt, like this, the peanut production is more focused in this area. And also this area ha that like has a lot of a uh, lot of uh, uh, local potential in terms of local resources and also visit area, meaning the mangrove and so on. And then here we have like some faces of the, of the excellent OVAP groups. So first we have uh, here the Moringa, the, the Moringa producers. So Moringa is a very nutritious, nutritious plant. And also in Senegal, a lot of programs, both international and, uh, and local, are trying to develop so this tree because of like its potential to find against, uh, against malnutrition um, and so on. And second, we have like uh, this, uh, the lady, she is like the chairwoman. She, she, is, she is the chairwoman of, uh, of a group. The group is mainly specialized in the production of cashew nuts. So cashew nuts, like they recorded one of the best sales at the Ovop shop in, uh, in Dakar. And third, we have like the, this is the, this is the uh, mangrove honey, mangrove honey group. So the, this mangrove honey has a special, very special taste. And it was like very appreciated by the, by the Dakar citizens. So, and for the, the first picture, we, here is the salt. The Senegal is known, and especially like one area, Kaulak, the target area is very known for its big production of salt. And this salt is one of the success story of this Senegal of because it was sold in, uh, in Japan by a company called Fankel. So Fankel, they make a collaboration with this group and also they sold, this, this salt was processed into pink and then sold in Japan. In the fifth picture, this is a lady. So she specialized in the jute bags, in the jute bags production. Uh, so the jute bag is recy recycled. It is potato bag that she, that she, that she, that she is buying at the, at the shops, in, at the shops, and then she brought, she, she transformed it into jute bags. And it was under, uh, during the project, one of the Japanese experts, he tried to develop a new product based on, the, based on the local materials. So the product was called Messenger Bag. And it was the expert, in, he was an expert in marketing. He tried to commercialize it in, in Japan, but unfortunately it did not success. But the lady, she tried to, she used, uh, she developed this product and sell it locally, like to the tourists because she is located in a resort area. And in terms of the support here, like the first picture, we can like see the ladies during the training, the training, like the other program, they focus a lot on, on trainings, on the human resource development of Senegal. They invest a lot on trainings, on nurturing, the female groups. The, the first picture here we can see like the, the female, the female, the female producers, the female entrepreneurs during the training. The second one with the solar panel. So this was this is this was an official delivery of this equipment. So this is the cashonet group. So we delivered the project, the the uh, the other program. So we delivered this this solar panel in order to boost, in order to increase, so the cashew nut production, because they are using the oven. Mm -hmm. And it was used for the community. And also this, there is one important thing like to, to notice, like this, the solar panels was main, were mainly like to increase the production of cashew, but the village, they use also, so this equipment to 
as electricity as power supply. So the ladies they developed like a new a new business. So by by providing by providing uh, by providing electricity to the surrounding uh, to the surrounding neighbors. Uh, the third picture. So this is inside the Ovop shop. The Ovop shop was implemented in Dakar city. Dakar is the capital city of Senegal. So this is an antenna shop. It was the main objective is was to, to implement to, to implement so and to set up an antenna shop where like the producers who are in uh, who are located in remote areas they can sell their products in the capital city. And here here also the they can have like the sales they they can develop their sales channels. They can develop their sales channel and at the same time also they can receive the feedbacks, the feedbacks from the consumer, the feedbacks from the Dakar citizens. Mm -hmm. And the fourth, so this is this was during like one of our seminar where we where we had like the 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 Japanese the Japanese company who was like in charge of implementing the project, the director of club industry, the counterpart, and also the beneficiaries. And also one important fact is still now, so, so the, the, the OVO program was finished, finished in 2014, but still now the, this, this, the directorate, this, the Senegalese agency, try to continue uh, the, the boutique OVO. So still now the, the OVO shop is still open. So as I said uh, earlier, so the OVAP was only developed in two areas, in two target areas. But because of the successful results, because of the successful results during the, during the OVAP project, so all the regions, all the areas also, they express their wish to be part of this program. And for example, here we can see like some, some images, some pictures about the craft, the basketry. So in Senegal, there are some areas that are very famous because of their basket production. Here we can see the local communities without any means, without any, any experience producing. So these, these very wonderful, so uh, baskets. And there is like uh, one image we can see, this is like the, there is a village just specialized on basket production. So one of the one of the particularity of the of the Senegal of up was that we just focus we mainly focus we did not focus a lot on craft production. So I think because of the selected areas because the, those selected areas areas were made much known for their for their for the for their food products for food products but not craft. So here too, we have some, some, some wonderful craft products, the djembe, the drum, which is very famous in Senegal. We have also some pulse, like traditional pulse made of laser. Mm -hmm. And also the wax, the wax is a fabric which is, very, which is very known, very famous in West Africa. And now a lot of startups, a lot of young people are trying like to make very, very creative products based on the wax. And on the other hand, also we have the cosmetic uh, in Senegal. So one of the one of the flag product of Senegal is the baobab, the baobab tree. So based on the baobab tree, like we can produce the cosmetics, the baobab powder, and so on. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have the local communities products. And also we have the what 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 I, what I call luxury luxury craft. Luxury craft is the craft that have been developed by by the Senegalese the Senegalese students th that who studied design outside in France or other Western countries and then who know about the potential of craft and who returned. And now there is one important fact in Senegal is like there is this luxury craft is very well developed is like there is a there are special customers who are attracted so by this by this craft and we can see like there is a big difference of quality between this 
this design, this craft, and also that of the local communities. So here I would like to share so my findings of Senegal OVOP pro uh, project, uh, Senegal, my findings of Senegal OVOP project. So the positive factors, so after the project, so we recognize like there is a better, there is a positive, the, the producer, the SMEs, they have a positive outlook of their business. So better recognition of their local treasures, sound knowledge of business management tools because of the package of trainings that were provided to them, a more open mindset, and also the, uh, in, uh, the in, increase of their revenue because now like their network, their business network after the project it developed. Mm -hmm. So the use of projects of up in their CV. So because like, you know, the standard of the other project, so they use so this, their participation, their award in this project to apply for new projects, governmental, international. At national level also here, like I don't, there is no, there is no figures like to assess it, but we can see like after the OVOP, we can notice a multiplication of local product based shops, online website and startups. But also during the OVOP, we used to advertise a lot through the radio and, and that. So I did not make like some, some studies, how, why there is a multiplication of these based uh, local product based shop, but Mainly the OVOP shop, the OVOP, the OVOP shop was one of the first to be implemented in the Dakar city. But after that, we can see that there were a multiplication of local product based shop. Online website just specialized for selling local products and also startups. And the government has some special programs also for to produce locally and consume locally. So what are the factors to be improved? I think the first is quality improvement, quality in terms of the products, the products quality in terms of the packaging, especially the packaging. So quality, um, quality improvement and R&D, and R &D, research and development need more developments. Self-production of raw material is also much preferable because most of uh, the SMEs, they buy the raw materials. They, pro they don't produce by themselves. And I think they will gain much if they like in collaboration with the authorities, with the local authorities, they can have the plot of land, their own plot of land to develop their own products. And also assets such as production unit is determinant to business success. It enables better diversity of products and services and the use of technological tools as a mean of innovation. I think the COVID like this COVID situation and the development of now the use of technological tools is, is a need, is a need for SMEs. So they need to upgrade their, they need to upgrade their knowledge and to have like the basic knowledge in terms of technology. And then way forward, so what about, about the, the OVOP concept so presently? So there is an international platform. It is uh, led by, by a Vietnamese, Vietnamese organization called Vietcraft and also IOVOP, the International One Village, One Products Alliance. So led by Mr. Ngoc. So Mr. Ngoc is trying to develop a new global, uh, a new global OVOP. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2000, uh, in 2019, 19, so he invited us, like the, he invited us to take part to the Lifestyle Vietnam. Lifestyle Vietnam is an international event, which is held like every year, uh, April of every year. And also there is an exhibition and there are lectures about the OVOP, about the handmade, about the, the craft and so on. And here, the first picture we have, like it was during the official ceremony, there was the presence of the prime minister. And also we can see the other, the other, uh, the, other, the second picture, the Senegalese booth. 
the Senegalese booth. So the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese, and also the, the visitors, they appreciated a lot. So the OVO, not only Senegalese, but also the OVOP products. The third picture, we also not only the fair and also the, the seminars, but also the we visited, we visited, we went at the site to visit the OCOP, the one commune, one product, the OCOP uh, SMEs. So we, go, we went to visit the OCOP producers and also to know better about their, their, uh, their products, their stories, and so on. Mm -hmm. As, as a takeaways, so I think my learning from this, this concept, one of the main is leadership. I think leadership is very important to support the local communities to attain to reach a certain level of regional development. And this is uh, what this is what uh, Sensei, this is what Dr. Hiramatsu he, he taught like leadership, local diplomacy. So the OVOP, it was first developed in Oyama city in the 1960s. So when he was elected as a governor, he went there to learn about this OVOP. And he, once there, he just copy and try to improve that concept. And also through the local diplomacy, he invited a lot of international worldwide leaders in OITA to make them see the achievements of the, uh, of, the, of the OVOP. And at the same time also, he traveled. He traveled a lot to, to share his experience. The second one about leadership is the vision. I think the leader needs to have a vision. Now, the, this, this university, which is located in, uh, and where I studied, it is located in Oita. This university, it was proposed, it was proposed, it was proposed by Hiramatsu. So the, the leader, he needs to have a clear, he needs to have a vision. And now this university is one of the best international university of Japan. It has more than 50 nationalities. And also it is very, very, very cultural. I started there for two years, like every month, there is the China week, African week, so on, so on. So I, the, the students here, they have the opportunity to learn a lot. So it was, this was the idea of, uh, of uh, Hiramatsu. And also lobbying to, to develop the, the OITA. So during the World Cup, uh, the, the, the soccer World Cup in 2002, I think. So he make an intensive lobbying so that the OITA stadium the OITA to be selected, uh -huh, to be selected as part of the stadium where the, the where, where the games are played. Mm -hmm. And so this, all this were done so because of a good uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. And also what's with regard to the to craft and uh, the farming pro and farming products. So one one main thing, one important thing that I learned both in Vietnam and also in Japan is innovation. Is innovation. Innovation meaning like how with just one product, one product, one farming product, we can develop several categories of products. And in these products, how we can develop several subcategories of products and also good quality. This is like, it is, this, this was very impressive. So this was like a good learning to me both in Japan and also in Vietnam. So here I would like to share the Vietnamese coconut. So here we have the coconut tree. So the main, it is as it is a food product. So the main processing product is relating to food. Here we have the coconut juice, the coconut candy, both processed and not processed. And also we have the craft products craft products so based on the based on the fiber on the fiber of the of the grind uh, coconuts so we can make the baskets and also we can make all the sub products or the craft based sub products 
And also not only craft, we can also um, process this coconut into cosmetics. And also in the cosmetic, you can have several products, meaning lips, lip mask based on coconut, uh, shampoo, cream, and all based on the coconut. And also the flow, so we can based on also based on this product or based on the coconut we can also produce fertilizer and that's not i think we can also list some other benefits of only one product so how just by having one product one farming product one food product we can develop several products mm -hmm. and i think this is the end so jerry jeff jerry jeff is uh, thank you so this is the wall of it is well. So Jeff, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Joseph, for a wonderful talk. It really covered uh, such a range of uh, countries and gives us an idea of, of world craft linking Africa and Japan in ways. And I think the final point about the sub product shows how there can be connections between uh, crafts which are, are based on common materials, which can include ephemeral products, uh, as well as uh, other, other craft products. Um, now, I'm sure many of you have questions, but I thought uh, to begin, if Mr. Nyok, who's with us from Vietnam, uh, he is uh, currently leading uh, IOVOP uh, from Vietnam, uh, if he would be able to share with us uh, the role of Vietnam in this, because it's quite remarkable the, the way in which Vietnam has taken a leading role uh, in uh, OVOP. So it'd be good to know from him the perspective of, uh, of Vietnam in this and why Vietnam is putting so much in this. Uh, greetings, Mr. Nhok, and uh, Happy New Year. So, uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Project, long time no see. Uh, I think you have a great presentation. Then um, uh, I have a feeling that um, you have already introduced uh, everything about um, OVOP uh, to, keep, to give you some updated information that Ujida um, Sang uh, sends the best regards to all of you. Um, I met him last year after um, before the COVID-19. Then uh, we travel around Japan again to review what happened with the OVP Japan. And um, you know already he's very enthusiastic about OVP. And uh, I share with him about uh, our meeting. It um very unfortunate uh, hit English is not very good and uh, he is so uh, in uh, not very good conditions. But uh, it uh, he would like to send the battery regard to one of you. Regarding the, um, uh, the, the uh, IOVP initiatives, as you know, um, um, Vietnam uh, in uh, 2018, Vietnam started with uh, uh, one commute on products after many, many times of discussion between the high ranking official. But uh, we are fortunate that the um, present leader of Vietnam is very much interested in the um, development of the um, rural industries. And um, OVP, or OCOP in Vietnam, has been finally selected as the um, strategic tools to develop the rural economies in Vietnam. Then uh, we consider uh, one commute, one product, uh, an economic, economic program to support for the um, um, rural communities in Vietnam. In the past, uh, uh, there are many uh, ideas about the old top, old vop in many countries. So you know already that uh, it ha had been started uh, since um, 1979, but uh, we have a lot of lessons learned from many, many different countries. And uh, as Rojab mentions, that not all uh, OVP or old top, old ops were successful. We have seen a lot of issues. Then uh, Vietnam, uh, we are the followers, but we try to find a different way of um, developing the uh, co program. Then it's very interesting uh, after the event that you join, some of you join already in um, 
2019 then the um, the um, government of Vietnam had already uh, put um, let's say uh, put in the um, country uh, uh, strategic development um, country uh, development strategy to focus on OCOP and international cooperation is a very important role of OCOP development in Vietnam. Uh, Rojab have been mentioned some of some of the issue, but uh, we consider that um, when you talk about when you, you consider OCOP is economic program, it means that you have to follow the market mechanisms. That if you don't have very good products, you don't have very competitive products, then it means that soon, sooner or later you will fail. Then, but how to improve the, the quality of product, how to improve is, let's say, a uh, competitive advantage. Then um, some activity has been, um, how to say, for court in Vietnam. The third, you know, uh, I want to add something before talking about IOP. Then the third, we consider the, um, the productivities. Productivities. But you know, already in Vietnam, um, if you talk about crop only, then um, there are 2,000 crop villages in Vietnam. But if you mention about the food processing and some other group of uh, uh, OCOP, then we have another 6,000 crop villages. Then in total, we have about seven, uh, um, 8,000 crop villages of um, crop and food processing in, in Vietnam. And all of the villages is the, uh, are the candidates for the OCOP products. And um, um, the good thing is, uh, um, Vietnam is, let's say, if, if the Japan is a little bit the uh, bottom-up approach, uh, Thailand and some other country is um, more or less, I think, the top-down approach. Then Vietnam trying to be balanced between uh, both uh, um, top-down and uh, bottom-up. You know, um, since 2018 until now, then the system of the old corp in Vietnam has been well established, I think, similar to Thailand model. I mean, um, in 2018 and 19, we uh, developed the network down to the district levels. But uh, at the end of 2019, we, the government had made decision that it should be down to communal levels, that is one communal one product. It means that the, not only the, the old co producers, I mean, the community, but the authorities of communal have been get involved in different uh, uh, process. Um, OCOP. Then um, to give you some more information about the um, IOVOP, um, that is not easy work because um, after the workshop, then but I really want to have something happens. Then we discuss a lot with the um, let's say the uh, Prime Minister of Vietnam to set up the network. Then um, of course the network has been set up, but the question is what the countries. I mean, participating country will be benefited from the network. But the experience, you know, already is just in some other countries, um, I think in Indonesia, in the past, they set up already the network of OVPs, but it, it doesn't work at the end. Then to, we try to uh, discuss with governments that, okay, it's important, that will be win win for all countries, but uh, it should be uh, uh, mentioned clearly in own policy, the way that we work together with uh, the participate, participating countries. Rojab know very well that, okay, we have uh, some kind of MOU with Senegal. We have, uh, actually we have up to uh, 16 MOU with different countries. I always mentioned, okay, with the efforts of a uh, small organization like the club, it's okay, but still um, not, um, I think it's been a starting point only, but how the government should involve in the developing of the network of national OVPs to make sure that it will be benefited for all participating countries. Um, the good thing is the Deputy Prime Minister of Vietnam that he, he, he totally agrees that he said he, he, he will support for international cooperation. And Vietnam will be one of the, let's say in the first few years, Vietnam will try to be, I would say, the accord like initiators, then uh, there will be some incentives for the development of the network. Uh, we plan already for the, um, the trip uh, to some countries, like uh, in uh, uh, like uh, even mentioned to Rojab in Senegal, the western part of Africa. 
or we have already made a point with uh, some other country like uh, Argentina, Chile, but it's very unfortunate that we could not travel last year. And um, already we have a permit with some countries that okay, if they can organize some trip to Vietnam. For example, I mentioned about the coconut thing, but in Vietnam, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, up to 8,000 um, um, old cop model, and more or less we can share with our friends. And of course, uh, we all know that we can learn a lot from our friends, and uh, we hope that our friends also can learn something from Vietnam. We also just mentioned also something, but uh, I want to uh, emphasize on two things that will be good for, for all countries. The first, of course, identities should be maintained for every country, but that we differentiate the product of every country. And that is the philosophy of the OVOP. But um, the, we can share about the, we can learn with each other about how to improve the productivities. We can, we can share the, let's say, we can promote the product of other member country among the networks. I mean, just the, the, the marketing systems. Then two things have, have been uh, uh, approved in Vietnam. The first, that for uh, Vietnam, we, we discussed for some um, incentives for old corp or old top of your people that from uh, other member countries to get some incentive when they export to Vietnam. When we can open, uh, we have already decided to open three uh, national center for international OVP products. Then so when any country want to promote their product, like uh, if, those apps, if, 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 if if you want to promote some laser products or some baskets you mentioned, then there will be incentives when you bring the product to Vietnam. We hope that um, uh, it can open the market for all participating countries. The sec second thing that uh, when you talk about let's say a specific product like uh, baskets. When I, when I go in Kenya or some other African countries, if you have wonderful products, but the productivity is really an issue, then we can share, actually we share some kind of um, technique. If we're not, uh, not uh, influenced to the identity of the countries, but some basic or some, um, some technique that you can uh, even double your productivities. Then um, that has been put into our program. Then uh, um, the participating country can receive some support. You have, you have to pay for international travel, but when you are in Vietnam, then you will be support for uh, almost everything. Then like uh, an accommodation for travel and um, for the, uh, someone, the trainer, like someone who can train the, 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 the people of the participating countries. And um, it, uh, the unfortunate thing is because of the, 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 the disease, the, the COVID, then uh, we cannot promote a lot um, the, uh, international activities. But, uh, um, but um, anyway, uh, the policy was there. And the good thing is, you know, Vietnam, uh, last few weeks, you have a new election. And the, the former DWG Prime Minister have been promoted. Then I strongly believe that the, the idea of OCOP and the idea of IOUP will be strongly support in the time to come. And um, hopefully, Rojab and our friends, I see some of our friends in, in this um, platform. Then uh, we can meet soon and we can uh, talk more face to face. It's not easy to work from distance uh, like this one, but um, mm -hmm. um, the confirmation from me is Vietnam is very much support for the idea of international cooperation. And uh, if, uh, if the COVID is over, then of course um, the government of Vietnam will take stronger actions and discuss with every country that we have made MOU, then for very, very specific program and to work well together to ensure that the network win really work. Really work. That's some um, um, several information that I, I, I want to share with all of you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nock. And I think, uh, you get a sense of the, the energy behind uh, OVOP in Vietnam with Mr. Nock and Joseph mentioned leadership and uh, having witnessed Mr. Nock at work, uh, he has tirelessly gone round to visit as many, almost all the, the villages uh, as part of this network in Vietnam to document particularly the crafts. And now he's uh, going around the entire world. Uh, he seems to pop up everywhere uh, in Uzbekistan and, and so on. 
uh, spreading this particular platform. So uh, I think it's an interesting, uh, an important uh, part of Worldcraft to consider at this stage. Um, I wonder, uh, Sachiko San, Sachiko San, yes. <laughs> uh, as the as a Japanese voice here, um, what what do you make of OVOP? Is it uh, something that uh, you can recognize as something particularly Japanese? Well, uh, thank you very much, um, the, Mr. Uh, Joseph San. It 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 was fascinating presentation because which. I haven't known much about it because uh, I, I have been journalist and uh, I uh, featured some craft, craftsmanship, but without knowing uh, that this kind of platform much, because we focus on what to do with the uh, artisan or sort of particular thing rather than some sort of uh, relationship between the local uh, economy and uh, uh, crafts. But this is very important initiative, and I didn't even know the Mr. Hiramatsu who initiated it. So I have, I, I really have to say thank you for all information, which I learn a lot. But the thing is that what I'm, uh, I, I, I like to know about it is: is there anything? What, what, what is the relationship between so-called craft council and this kind of platform? If each country has got something that organization like Crafts Council, which can promote the quality wow. of craft. If I can come in here, um, Sachiko san, that uh, at the moment they're, they're quite separate. Uh, I think oh. that Mr. Nyok is, and, and, and I are trying to, to make them connect together um, mm -hmm. so that uh, there can be exchange and uh, stronger relations. I know Mr. Nyok has been to London to meet the president of the World Craft Council and wants to work with their World Craft City program, which is a, a parallel program to One Village, One Product. And I think there's great potential there, given the fact that the World Craft Council, as well as trying to promote traditional crafts to sustain uh, the history of craft, is also there to uplift the conditions of artisans, which certainly One Village, One Product uh, is is something which has uh, that as its goal. And it's interesting to hear from Vietnam now setting up almost uh, international trade agreements so that uh, there's a privileged exchange of products as part of one village, one product between countries. So it has that kind of potential, which I think is only increased during a pandemic when mm -hmm. global mm -hmm. supply chains are disrupted and there has to be a lot more emphasis on local production. So out of that potentially can come new products. I'm not sure if Joseph or Mr. Nock want to add to that. Um, I think we have a few potential cooperations between WCC and IOVP. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, WCC have very large network internationally and uh, um, with very strong human resources. And um, what I, I, I recognize, um, um, I mean, the first thing that, um, of course, OVP cover uh, not only craft, but also many other, uh, let's say, fields like uh, um, food processing, beverages, or even uh, uh, community tourism. But uh, I think the, 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 the well-established WCC, uh, we can utilize a lot, and we, I think we can share. For example, then I think that in some countries that uh, we have the IOVOP network, then we can work closely with uh, WCC. Uh, maybe uh, Kevin, you may know that, uh, for example, we are mapping, mapping of the um, um, OVOP uh, internationally. That means that uh, what kind of products you can find in many different countries. Um, uh, Recently, the Soviet Club also takes the very, uh, I think, the, the, the initiatives to develop a kind of the visual uh, a promotional platform. As you know, if you have chance to, 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 to visit our, let's say, uh, lifestyle uh, vietnamonline.com, then you see that we uh, develop the first, the first platform in the world about the trade promotion for craft products. I mean, of course, we try, try to promote lifestyle Vietnam, um, we try to, but Lifestyle Vietnam, Vietnam is only the name, the location, 
but the lifestyle I mean, I mean the city international event. Then we are now working closely with some countries, then try to uh, digitalize their products, then to put in our platforms. Then I think that um, I myself want to develop very much the mapping, let's say, to, to have the mapping of, um, of this is you call the Atlas, um, David, is it correct? You call the Atlas of a graph or something like this. Yes, well, I, actually, I would like to share with you at the moment, mm. uh, if you can see mm. this, uh, the project was started in Australia. Mm. Australia is not yet part of the One Village, One Product. And I guess like many, what you might call developed or settler colonial countries, uh, they don't have the same village structure. Mm. Uh, so, but there are many crafts in, in rural communities and we've been working with uh, East Gippsland and I pay my respect to Crystal Stubbs who's with us uh, here this evening from East Gippsland. Uh, an area which has suffered greatly because of bushfires that occurred this time last year in Australia. And as part of the regeneration, there's an emphasis on handmade products and mm. as well as increased internal tourism because of course, Australians can't travel overseas anymore. So they have nowhere to spend their, their excess dollars uh, other than locally. So we're in the process of developing an app uh, so that people as they're touring around can find what is the local craft product, uh, where they can discover it, where they can visit workshops, where they can learn techniques that masters can teach them. And uh, we'll eventually be scaling this up to cover all Australia, but we're starting with, with East Gippsland at the moment. So in this sense, I think in Australia, it'd be terrific to share with, with you the techniques of mapping and uh, eventually we'll put together an app so people can have that access to this on their smartphone. And usually in Australia, the wine, wine itinerary is very popular. People drive around to visit uh, different vineyards and taste the wine. And we want to put craft on people's agenda as well so that uh, they can know where they can get the local products. So in this way, we hope OVOP can also extend to countries like Australia. I think definitely uh, this is what we should do. And um, um, another thing that uh, I, I'd like to discuss with WCC, and this has been um, initially agreed by our government, that um, uh, I have learned a lot from uh, Uzbekistan. David, we met there. But, uh, after the trip to Uzbekistan, I have discussed with our government uh, the, the lesson that I learned from Uzbekistan. And um, as I mentioned uh, previously to Kevin that uh, um, maybe our crab communities, international crab community should gather very often uh, in certain countries. And Vietnam is going to be the hot country in 2022. And uh, what we are going to do is we try to make the people proud of what they are doing and to connect the people together. They can learn, they can share experience and they win let's say, uh, promote uh, uh, job in many different ways, uh, both uh, physical uh, um, uh, or let's say the, some intangible value of, of, the, of, the, of the, the products. And I think that um, because you see, uh, um, so, so my, my problem is I, I really want to discuss in person with everyone and, um, and to make some, uh, let's say, conclusions. But because of the limitation in travel, I can, can, cannot make an, an, an anything now. But um, if in the, the, in the case that we can uh, control the COVID and international travel, uh, let's say the, rest, the, the restriction will be lifted, then 2022, then there will be a uh, Vietnamese government want to organize a big event. Then we want to cooperate with the WCC. WCC and WCC will be the key player in in in, in this event, and we, we try to discuss with other country to host this event. Uh, okay, 2022 Vietnam and maybe next next year Japan, next year Australia, next year Senegal or something like this. Then the people should know uh, uh, each, each other and try to find a way to, to learn from each other. And uh, some immediate things that we can cooperate. Mm, that would be wonderful to look forward to and gives us uh, something on the horizon, which is what we need at the moment, uh, Mr. Njok. Now, Joseph, I'm aware that you've got commitments 
Uh, mm. It's very early, but you've got a day ahead of you. Uh, but I just wonder if anybody has anything quickly to ask or to add for Joseph before we call it a morning or a night, depending on where <laughs> we are in the world. Mm. Uh, good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Joseph, for introducing this very important uh, perspective on uh, craft today. And uh, for Mr. Nock for joining us, for Sachiko providing the Japanese perspective. And uh, I think this sort of dialogue should uh, certainly continue as we put our minds together, if not in person, at least uh, on the screen here. So thank you very much. And next uh, month, we'll have Hai Yong Cho talking about uh, craft in South Korea. Uh, Hai Yong Cho has got extensive experience in East Asia, uh, was uh, Director General of the Craft and Design Federation of South Korea and uh, can talk particularly about the role of universities uh, in this scene, which is very topical at the moment. So thank you so much and uh, go well and uh, success to you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin.